Well, in more ways than one, Keenan and Alicia, first with the concept, this whole festival is designed really to allow festival goers to feel a part of the art they are seeing by having it displayed right on city walls where we live and where we work. We actually had a hard time finding a live location this morning because there were so many great murals to choose from. And the concept behind this festival is really intentional. Speaking with the artists and the organizers behind it, they say through their years of traveling for festivals around the country and around the world, they noticed a problem with representation, so they decided to change it. When kids drive by with, with their parents or by, walk by and they see us creating, it's, it's really inspirational to them because they can see, oh, this is, it's a future in being a creator. And when it comes to being a black creator in the industry, Detroit visual artist Sydney James says, We're always mostly the only one present. Not this time. The inaugural Blackout Walls Festival was created by and is led by black artists. It was conceived by myself, Max Sansing, artist based out of Chicago, and Thomas Detour Evans, an artist based out of Denver. The family friendly event kicked off on July 24th and goes through this Saturday. During that seven day stretch, you can see participating artists at work, 10 of them local, 10 more from around the country. We caught up with co-founder Max Sansing, hard at work on his piece. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, Southside. Inspired by the artwork in his own neighborhood, he got involved in summer arts programs as a kid, then started leading them as a young adult. Murals, he says, give an important glimpse into what communities care about. There's a artistic expression of the culture of the community that the mural's in. Murals can kind of reflect the culture that's in the neighborhood. It's part of the reason this festival is happening where it is, Detroit's historic North End, once a bastion for industrial development and black business. Over the years, it's faced many setbacks and has been at the forefront of James' work in the past, like this reimagined take on a classic. Through blackout walls, festival goers also get an impromptu tour of the neighborhood and the places that once drove it. We had the Apex Bar um, right across the street, the Phelps Lounge down the street. I want them to feel like they just entered into a museum, but they didn't have to go anywhere. And it's not even quite seven o'clock yet, but we are already seeing artists around the North End already back at work to put the finishing touches on their murals. And the Knight Foundation is one of the sponsors of Blackout Walls. You can go to our website, WXYZ.com, for a list of all of them. And to wrap up this week long festival happening Saturday, there's going to be a Blackout Walls block party right in front of the Chroma building from 12 to 6. Of course, you can't miss that because on the Chroma building is one of James's last works. That's the iconic girl with the D earring. Reporting live this morning in Detroit's North End, I'm Jen Schantz for 7 Action News. Yeah.